Hey guys, welcome back. My name's LT and on this channel I show you all the steps that it takes to build a custom truck. And today I'm going to be spending a little bit more time on Ugly Truck, the 2000 Chevy Silverado 1500. Now this has an 8.1 liter 496 cubic inch V8 stuffed down between the frame rails and under the stock hood. Last time I just got it off the dyno where it made 306 horsepower and 429 pounds of torque. And I know that's not all that impressive, but it is a bone stock engine and I'm happy with where it's at for now. But ultimately I want to be making a whole lot more horsepower. Now my final goal, I'm just going to go ahead and state it for the record, 1000 horsepower at the rear wheels. That's kind of a standard benchmark to go for, so I figure I'm calling my shot and I'm going to go for it. Now to get there, obviously I need a whole lot more air and fuel going through the engine. And my preferred method or the route that I'm going to take this time around is going to be turbocharging. Now I want to run a single turbo kind of in the same way that a lot of LS guys do on a truck like this, where it's going to be mounted right up near the front of the passenger side cylinder head somewhere in this area. Use the stock manifold on the driver's side and I'll route the exhaust gas kind of down below the oil pan and back up where it will all merge together over here. Now there are no off the shelf options when it comes to turbo parts for an 8.1. I've seen a lot of guys do sort of a remote style turbocharger where it's mounted under the bed, but I really don't like that option because there's a lot more complications when it comes to things like plumbing the oiling system and there's just a lot more opportunities for failure. So I prefer a high mounted turbo where the oil can just be pressurized in and gravity drain back down to the pan. Because of how tight it is on the passenger side of the engine bay, obviously we're going to have to get custom and there's a couple different routes I could take. Now, a turbo header is probably the most ideal situation where you go out, you buy a flange, buy a bunch of elbows, straight pipes, and a collector, and you just start to build. Now, that is the ideal situation, but I don't know if I have the room to do a turbo header exactly how I want, like I said, because space is so cramped. So a log style of manifold is how I'm going to run. Now, again, you could build these 100% from scratch, but you want to talk about time consuming? Well, fitting the individual runners into the main section of the log, well, you got to have those clearances basically perfect. You don't want any gaps when you're welding it up. And that is probably the most time consuming thing that I've done. I've built them before and they usually come out pretty nice. But like I said, they're time consuming. And I think, I just think I found a shortcut. This is a stock 8.1 exhaust manifold from the driver's side of an O2 Suburban 2500. And all the difficult transitions to make in a log manifold already exist in this part right here. Now, I'm going to run this passenger side manifold on the driver's side, but a couple of quick notes. On an LS, you can flip a manifold upside down and you'd have this port facing upward. However, on a big block Chevy, you cannot do that because of the pattern of the holes. Check it out. If I flip this gasket upside down the same way that you would if you had an LS manifold, well, the ports are not going to line up. So I've got the hole lined up there, the gasket covers half the ports, that bolt lines up, gasket covers half the port, and so on. So there's only one way that this manifold is going to bolt onto the cylinder head. So that means this outlet is going to be pointing down and facing the frame. So my plan is to chop this off and add an elbow that bends up and then have some sort of a transition where the gases from the driver's side of the engine merge in. Because like I said, all the difficult work where these individual runners merge into the main area, all that work is already done. However, in order for my plan to work, I've got to be able to weld to this material. On an LS truck of the same year, the manifolds are actually made from cast steel, which Good news means you can actually weld to it no problem. Now, I have a hunch and I'm assuming that these manifolds, because they're made from the same year, are also made from cast steel, but I don't know for sure. So I'm going to do what they call a spark test to determine if that's cast iron or cast steel, because if it's iron, basically my whole plan gets thrown in the trash.
Obviously, I'm not a metallurgist, but according to the internet, if you grind on regular mild steel like the sample here, you're going to get very bright sparks that start immediately after they leave the material. And that's exactly what I experienced on this mild piece of steel. However, on this mystery manifold, the sparks, they were much, much dimmer, but they did also start right off the material. They say that when you grind on cast iron, the sparks will start to get bright, you know, six or eight or 10 inches away rather than right off the material. So I'm really not sure exactly what that manifold is made of. So the only way I can think of to properly test it right now is just give it a weld and see what happens. Now these tests certainly weren't as conclusive as I would have hoped, but I think we're good to go and I think I'll have no problems welding this manifold to build my turbo setup. And here's a few reasons why. Number one, whenever I welded this flange back on, yes, I know it's not the prettiest looking weld in the world, but there was no cracking or no splitting of the welds. I've attempted cast iron before just to weld it, and normally what happens is there'll be a hairline crack or fracture that forms right down the center of the bead of the weld. And I guess it has to do with whenever the material cools off, it contracts at different rates and it just, it'll crack and you can actually hear it audibly. And I heard none of that. And number two, I did a bit of a drilling test. I put a couple of holes inside the flange here just to kind of see what would happen. And supposedly when you're drilling cast iron, you get nothing but just really grainy, really small sandy chips. On this one, I did get a lot more of the curly Q longer chips that you're supposed to get when you're drilling out mild steel. So I welded it back together, nothing cracked, and I've got the longer tail chips. I really can't explain the spark situation, but I guess as long as I can weld to it, nothing cracks, we're good to go. So now all I've got to do is buy some pipe. So we're jumping ahead in time by about a week because in that time I've been waiting on some parts. However, I did accomplish some teardown. I have the passenger side exhaust manifold removed from the engine, but the rest of the exhaust system, you can kind of see the flange down there, is still intact. I've also removed the radiator coolant expansion tank, the inner fender for easy access, the air box, the air intake tube, and even the AC compressor. I'll get to that in just a little bit. But in all that time, the parts have shown up so I can show you how I want to tackle this exhaust manifold where I'm going to merge two sides into one and put a big massive turbocharger up front on this 8.1. Here's what we're going to use. Now, this is the exhaust manifold you've already seen. And since you've seen it last, I chopped off the end of the flange and I kind of wire wheeled it to clean it up to hopefully make welding a little bit easier. The parts that I were waiting on, this stuff here, this is three inch schedule 40 mild steel weld pipe. Now this stuff is real heavy duty. It's got a really thick wall right at a quarter of an inch. So I know it'll work well in a high temperature, high stress application like a turbo manifold. I know sometimes the thinner material, it can have problems cracking and I didn't want to have that and weight isn't really a big concern. Now the flange that the turbo is going to connect to is this guy right here. This is a T6 flange and it's got a nice nifty little divider for a twin scroll exhaust housing, which I am going to be running. And also it has a nifty little pocket that has been machined in to accept a section of three inch schedule 40 pipe. So it kind of nicely registers in there, making for good fit up and good welding. Now the plan where I've come down here and chopped the end of the manifold off is to place a 90, whether it's a long radius like this one or a short radius like this one, and kind of direct the exhaust up towards the top of the engine and have the turbo sitting on top. Now, as you can see, the diameter of the new pipe is much larger than the existing manifold. So my plan for that was, I want to come along here and cut this guy basically in half and attach another half section of three inch pipe kind of right along the bottom and merge the two together. 
And then on the opposite side, I'll come in and take another 90 or a 45 possibly and direct it down and put a V band on the end. And that's where the exhaust gases from the driver side of the engine are going to cross over up into a single log style manifold. Now there is some debate about which style of manifold or header is better. And there's no question a true four into one header design is going to be much more ideal for any application, whether that's forced induction, naturally aspirated or what have you. However, for this particular application, I didn't want to run a true header because number one space, it's a little bit tight. Uh, number two, a four into one is going to be a little more difficult to merge. Uh, for a single turbocharger, having the driver side merge underneath the engine and up across. Um, and for simplicity's sake, that's just kind of why I decided to run a log style manifold. Now, there are a lot of guys out there, especially in the LS world, who run a single log style manifold with pretty good results. Um, yeah, do you sacrifice a little bit of spool up and potentially a little bit of horsepower? Yeah, I bet you do. But with a log style manifold, like I said, some guys are making a ton of horsepower. so. That's how we're going to do it. But there is one problem that I ran into. So the modified exhaust manifold bolts up to the cylinder heads without any problems and it points forward just like I imagined it would. However, there are a couple of interference issues that may pump the brakes on this project, at least for now. Uh, when you bolt the AC pump back onto the block, you know, because I want to have working air conditioning, it becomes pretty apparent that things are almost too tight. Even if you use the tightest radius 90 degree bend that I have, when you kind of slide it along the manifold, well, you can see it won't even slide down low enough. It just hits the AC compressor. And then, you know, you got to consider the lines. They come out, you know, right in this area and they kind of head forward and one heads down towards the front. There's just no way to make that tight of a transition with the setup that I have, this exhaust manifold and that 90 degree sweep. And that's not the only problem. You know, the three inch schedule pipe is about three and a half inches outside diameter. And to make it work, I'd have to cut the manifold kind of, you know, kind of along this area right below the individual runners. And then it would stick down so far, it would actually interfere with the motor mounts. And I definitely don't want to have to redo those. And, you know, I want to keep them kind of away from the heat so the rubber inside doesn't melt or anything like that. Um, and the final problem is just turbo placement in general. Um, I'll show you the turbo in a second, but it's an S400 based turbo, which is pretty big. And if I mount it on the front of this manifold with the elbow sweeping up, it pushes it even further forward. So it's going to kind of sit in this space and it'll be so far up. Well, I won't be able to get a good, you know, air filter on the front of it. So for all those reasons, I'm not going to be able to do the manifold like I had intended. So I've got an order in the works. I'm going to buy a new exhaust manifold flange some more schedule 40 pipe, this time a little bit smaller for the primaries. And then I'm just going to have to build a 100% from scratch turbo log manifold for this 8.1 swapped Silverado. Now there's a million different turbos out there on the market that I could have gone with. Anything from mild to wild and from like 300 bucks all the way up to thousands. This guy right here, this is a VS racing turbocharger and it is kind of a budget oriented line. I think they're like seven or 800 bucks. And it is based off of an S400 frame. So as you can see, well, I've got like a nine inch uh, hand span there. This is a pretty big turbo. It does have a T6 divided turbine housing with a 132 AR ratio and an 88 millimeter turbine wheel. So as you can see, that thing is pretty darn big. And well, the reason why I went so big on the exhaust side is because we have a nearly 500 cubic inch engine and I don't want to have any excessive back pressure on the turbine side of things. On the compressor, pretty standard, it's got an 80 millimeter compressor wheel. So you would call this, well, an S480. And it'll support, well, probably a little bit more than that thousand horsepower goal that I have for this truck. Now, obviously, yes, I am going to have to build the motor to reach that thousand horsepower goal. In the future, it is going to get, you know, forged pistons, better rods, probably better crankshaft, and, and who knows, I might even stroke the thing out to, I mean, you can go 540 or 580 or even bigger, I think, on these. 
Um, but who knows, that's a decision to be made at a later date. For now, I just want to build the turbo kit and get the thing running at a low boost level. Uh, I know people do say that these things come apart at somewhere a little over 500 horsepower. So I'm going to try not to destroy it, but I do want to get the turbo on there and just, you know, kind of work out all the bugs before I build the motor and go nuts. I do want to say thank you for watching though, guys. Honestly, I appreciate each and every one of you subscribers because this channel has been growing a lot faster than I ever could have imagined. So thank you to each and every one of you. Now, the next upload on Ugly Truck, well, here's a promise. We are going to be building a 100% from scratch turbo manifold, and I am going to have the hot side done on the next upload. So you're going to want to stay tuned. I'll catch you next time.